Ever since I started making my own money, the urge of buying nicer, more expensive things comes out from time to time, where there would be a bigger speaker for the house, a newer couch for my feet, or simply newer clothes. Is it stuff that I need? Usually not. Thankfully, I also became more aware of this behavior and have considered a few ways of thinking to help stop unnecessary spending, or simply not feeling guilty of the things that I decide to buy. When I put eyes on to something I want to buy, the first thing I do is to wait. As humans, we seek for that dopamine hit that spending money gives. It's as if spending our hard-earned money into something we don't necessarily need can solve all of our problems. I'm often surprised by how much I pass on a purchase after giving myself a good waiting period. If it's something that costs quite a bit of money, I usually give myself about 15, 30 days. During this time, I can see if it fits into my budget, look at reviews, and most importantly, see if I even care after 30 days, if I still want it. This waiting period helps me avoid buyer's remorse. And it also helps me avoid impulse purchases and building a bit of discipline with my own money. As I start to put my eyes onto something that I want to spend everything on, I create a saving pot. One of the most effective strategies I adopted is creating a saving pot in my bank account, or even a physical one, into if you are more into cash. Whenever I feel the need to buy something non-essential, I put that amount of money into a separate savings account instead. This not only helps me with my impulse, with my spending, but it also helps me save for something that is truly valuable, and not just affecting my emergency fund. Watching this pot grow is really satisfying, and it serves as a reward, proving that my hard work actually pays off. It's not just about resisting the urge to buy something, it's about redirecting that impulse towards a greater goal, let's say. For instance, you might want to save for a dream vacation, or a new car, or even for a payment on a house. Every time you contribute to your saving pot instead of making an impulse purchase, you are one step closer of achieving this or that goal. This also helps to visualize the impact of your spending habits. Over time you'll see how much you've saved by not giving in to everything that you actually want to buy. It's a simple but very powerful tool that can transform your approach of managing your own money. Once I create the pot and while I'm waiting for these 15 to 20 days, I start making a pro and con list. Making this list may remind you of primary school when <laughs> teachers used to make us do things. It may sound childish to you, but I find that lists are the easiest and most effective way to visualize what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks of anything in life. In this case, an item. Well, there are a few things that usually repeat in this list, like less money or the maintenance costs. I tend to weigh in the intangible things a product actually has to offer, and the things that it doesn't as well. For example, when I'm thinking about which camera I wanted to buy, I looked into how a new camera would benefit me, how it would make my life easier, what it work my workflow easier, would, it, would I actually have fun with it, how many years will I be able to use it before it becomes outdated, and what about replacements if it breaks. You should be thinking of this item and questioning what problem it's actually going to solve, instead of thinking what or how you will be using it. Everything you buy is just something else that you will have to take care of, whether that means cleaning it, organizing it, or finding a new place to store it, or even just moving it. Creating this list forces you to slow down and to think critically about your potential purchase. It's easy to get swept into the excitement of buying new things, but taking the time to really consider both sides can really give you clarity. And once this list is ready and I'm convinced that this is the product that I need and that I still want, I start exploring for alternatives. There's almost always a more affordable or even a better option to what you initially wanted to buy. Whether it's finding a used version or even just waiting for a sale, exploring alternatives can save you a lot of money. For instance, instead of buying a new book, I borrow them from the library, or even before buying them, I research online to see whether this book is worth spending on. Instead of buying a, a brand new camera, I look for refurbished ones. This not only saves money, but often leads to more sustainable choices overall. Exploring alternatives can be actually quite fun. For instance, when considering buying a car, I took the time to explore like owners that 
I know. Not only did this save me a lot of money, but it also provided me with a reliable vehicle that actually it's meeting all my needs to perfection. In today's world, there's a lot of platforms and resources that can help you find affordable alternatives. Websites, apps, second-hand items, and you can even do it yourself. It can actually help you. In today's world, there are numerous platforms and websites dedicated just to help you find the cheapest and most alternative option. There's websites, there's apps, there's secondhand items, and even doing-yourself solutions that are just focused on helping you save money and not making you spend on useless stuff. After you look for alternatives and perhaps even found a cheaper version of the item that you were looking for, you can actually start looking at reviews. Before making any purchase, I make it a thing to look at reviews. Luckily, nowadays, you can easily search for user honest reviews, product reviews here on YouTube. You can see the product and how it works. This step has saved me from many regrettable purchases. If the reviews aren't good, it's just a clear sign to steer away from that product and not buying and spend my money on something better. Reading or watching reviews is like doing a mini research project on your potential purchase. It provides insights that go beyond all that marketing material which is usually just tailored at trying to sell it and pointing all the good stuff of the product or the item. If you watch a real life reviews, you provide, if you watch the real feedback users provide, you will really be spending time on what good the product does to them. For example, watching videos on a product I want to buy feels like more an investment rather than wasting my time. Once I get the product, I'm just an expert and pretty much know the inside and outside of the thing that I just bought, even though I don't have it yet, or I didn't have it yet. They can also reveal common problems or recurring issues with a product or a, per or a thing that you buy can help you avoid making a really expensive mistake for yourself. They often include comparisons with similar products, giving you a more open perspective on what's available in the market. Sometimes they even offer tips of like, hey, this is better than the other one, or hey, this is how you can get the most out of your products, which enhances the value and the usability, or they even give you a gift code, which can become handy if you wanna save some money. I do want to point out the negative side of reviews. Not only they can be biased, but they can be repetitive and they can be overly hyped for a product that perhaps you are not even sure. So you just get convinced that you need it when you actually don't need it. So be aware of that. If every single step outlined above doesn't help you on buying stuff or making you feel less guilty, you should start considering your financial goals. Whenever I'm tempted to buy something, I take a moment and consider my financial goals. I think about how this purchase will fit into my long-term financial, even my medium-term financial plan. Buying something I don't absolutely need is uh, really a setback to achieving my goals. By focusing on my financial objectives, I'm more motivated to skip just the unnecessary spending things that I don't need. This shift, sorry, in mindset has been crucial in keeping my money and not spending on unnecessary stuff. Considering your financial goals provides a bigger picture, a bigger perspective. It reminds you that every dollar spent on non-essential items is a dollar that it goes away from your goals. For instance, I set specific saving goals for living in a van in the future. Whenever I'm tempted to buy something, I remind myself of this goal and how important it is for me. This approach transforms your spending habits from the short term to the long term. It encourages you to be strategic and intentional with your money, ensuring that each purchase aligns with your life goals. Smart goals and regularly reviewing them can keep you focused. It's about making conscious choices that support your future rather than undermine it. And this way, creating a roadmap that will make you happy and more successful. Putting these things into practice over a period of time have really just changed the way I think in really the way I am with purchases. And I've ultimately stopped with the urge of buying things. What I do, it's usually a necessity or just replacing something that I already have. So I hope a few things from this video can prove useful for you. And anyway, as always, if you did like this video and you like this type of content, just be sure to like and consider subscribing to the channel.